Hi, Julia Watts here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So, as the title suggests, we're doing another background technique. I've called this one Bead Trails Background. I don't know what else to call it, but you, you'll, you'll see why I've called it that when we actually get, get going with it. So this background, um, I'm not sure whose idea it was originally. I know that I learned it at a class at Luby Crafts in Leighton Buzzard. But I think it might, might have come from Sue Wilson originally, um, but I'm not sure. But anyhow, so I've got here, this is a piece of super, super smooth watercolour card, the hot press card from Sentiment to Yours. It doesn't have to be this, but this is just really easy to work with. And I'm going with an oxide. Uh, you can use any uh, dye ink for your background. Uh, you want your kind of a smooth coverage, really, if you can. Um, so this is cracked pistachio and um, I think when we did the class we did it with faded jeans uh, in the background and I think back then because it is going back quite a lot of years when we did this um, I think it was probably regular distress because it was before oxides came out the thing with oxides is that they give you kind of a I suppose a more even coverage because of the pigment that's in the ink they're not just dye ink and of course they stay wet for quite a while which doesn't really matter with this technique and if you would if you were batch making you could do a whole load of uh, inky bits and then do the next bit all in a batch as well let's grab some kitchen rolls so i don't get fingerprints Obviously, you choose whatever colour you want. I just thought it might be nice to use this crack pistachio because I haven't used it for a while. And I'm using, ignore the handle, this is an Aladine handle uh, from a workshop from years ago. But um, I've got on my website, which is juliawattscrafts.co.uk, I've got some of the woodware uh, handles and it comes with a few of the sponges. And then you can also get the um, the replacement sponges as well. So I think that's that's inked enough. Nice smooth coverage. All we end up doing is moving the ink around until it's dry. Remember this is reactive with water so if we wanted to we could actually do some uh, inky blots on there as well. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to keep it nice and solid. I don't think we've got much ink on that. Good. Right, so next thing to do is I've just got some um, little caps here from the tops of some Mr. Bottles. And I've got um, some prize ribbon distress ink rear inca so this is a nice dark blue which i thought would be nice with this uh when we did faded jeans we used black soot so whatever color you want really and the beauty of these is that you can use the um, obviously to re-ink but they're they're like a pipette right, let's put just a little tiny shall we no we won't we'll just do with the pure ink i was going to put a little bit of water to dilute it down a bit but i think we'll just use two drops we'll start with that and then, this is why the, I've called the um, it bead trails. I've got some beads here. I've had these for years. They're guttermint beads and uh, they're 10 millimeter beads. It can be any, really a round bead is, is, is all you need. And the beauty of the, using a distress ink is that it's a water-based ink and so you can wash everything out afterwards. So you've got this bead nice and coated and you want a tray and you want to start the bead off just to the side and you're going to get it lipped over there and you're going to run it in trails over the background like that. It, it is a, quite a lot of fun to do. And when the inks run out, this is where you get dirty fingers. It up with a bit of tissue let's not get too mucky let's pop it in again 
give it another swizzle. Again, start it off on the edge and send it over again. It's really great for um, die cards. Um, obviously, you're getting a little bit of ink in, in your tray as well, so you could mist that afterwards and mop that up. Got quite a, a pronounced one there. It's, it just makes me giggle because I think it's such good fun, this. It's quite noisy if you're doing it in class. It's quite noisy because there's lots and lots of people making these kind of noises. I think actually one, one little drop would have been enough. Come on, over you go. Come on. like a constellation obviously you can stamp on top of this if you wanted to let's fetch that out of there so it's really cool isn't it obviously it's a little bit wet because the ink takes a little while to dry because it's it's kind of concentrated um i'll give that a little bit of a wiggle for you isn't it cool it's a fantastic background so so that's that's that we could take it one step further though let's just put that to one side and grab my bead because that'll that'll wash out in water nicely Ugh. and we can add another color if we want to so i think when we did it originally we didn't do that we just did um we just did the wrong colour. Let me just clean this out a sec. But I thought, just to show you a different thing that you could do. I mean, you can take a mister and you could you could mist a little bit into the pot. And so you can definitely kind of have your trails as misters if you want to. I thought it might be nice to use some of the um, radiant mustard pigment powders because they've got a nice palescence to them. That's clean enough. So another little thingy, a little bit dirty underneath, it's fine. Um, so another cap, and this is the New Gold from Sentimentally Yours, uh, and it's a, a, a dye and pigment powder, and there's also mica in there as well, so it's a wonderful um, product. We do need to be like a paint now, so we're going to just mist a little bit of water in the bottom there and get a tool to pick up a little bit of powder. We don't need much, because you saw from the, um, when we use the re you don't need much. That should do it. Give that a stir. So now we've got kind of a watercolour paint. Obviously, I've got a pot of beads. I think, do I still need these beads? Oh, yes, I do, because I want them to do this, um, this technique with. Have I got them on the side? I can't get the lid off now. Oh, there we go. My hands are weak. So, pop that in there. And we're going to pop our background back in there. Let's get rid of that muck. And give that a, a stir. It's not sticking to the bead as much because it's quite watery. So we'll just see how we get on, shall we? Just see how we get on. So we we'll pop that in there. And oh, that's interesting. Because some of the distress is still wet. It's disturbing the distress as well. See, so what you can do, actually, if you wanted to, is actually put your pigment on the side, like we've got that there, and then the bead will pick it up and then go onto your background. So you might, at this point, think, oh, wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> wish I'd have just stuck with the one colour but just to show you an option because obviously this is going to give a nice pearlescent um, finish to it 
I've got that massive trail in the middle that I'm not really happy with. Let's just put that bead in here again. And I'm gonna see if I can get it to go. Well, that's fine. Don't normally put it in the right on it like that. But I wanted some more concentrate going on. Obviously, while it's wet and you run the bead through it, it's going to pick up the ink from it. It's not as intense as a distress ink because this is a obviously diluted down pigment. Oh, I like that trail. That was quite cool. Let's do another one of those. Look at that. Where should we have the next one coming from? Let's have it coming from this side. Oh, I'm liking that. See, it, you always have to wait to see how it finishes. I do actually like the way it's running through the distress and disturbing the distress because remember, uh, distress um, activates with water and that includes your re inkers as well. This is getting a bit coloured now. Okay, I think we'll call it a day there. Remember, my lids are going to clean out nicely. So. so that's now my background. Isn't that cool? Obviously, depending on which way up you put it, it's going to give you a different look so you can decide which way. Obviously, you know, this would just work if you just wanted to pop a sentiment on, a matte and layer it, perhaps on some dark blue card. You've got good to go with a guide card. You know, obviously use, you know, you could use musical instruments on here. You could even bring in some of your dragons from Fairy Hugs. You can do lots and lots of things. But I think that that is, obviously it's not dry yet, so we've not got the full effect of the pearlescence. But I think that that is quite a special background. So um, happy with that. Hope you enjoyed it. Great thing to do with the kids because obviously it's controlled and you're in a or grandkids and, and it's controlled in a box um obviously you know, just make sure that if they're using your dye inks that you've got your carpet covered just in case the beads bounce off um but i i, I think i think it's a lot of fun and uh, i mean christmas colors um well anything really so i hope you've enjoyed that um please um like and subscribe to my youtube channel I think it's actually Julie Watts Crafts now. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I think they've, might, they've changed it. But anyhow, you're on it at the moment watching. So thank you very much. And uh, do watch uh, out for my other videos. Thank you. Bye.